I'm Dr. Lindsay Collins Prano. I'm a lecturer here in the School of Medicine in the Department of Anatomy and Pathology at the University of Adelaide. So my research really is very interested in the cognitive the molecular basis of cognitive impairment in healthy aging and neurodegenerative disease. But I have another aspect of my research that actually has a lot of implication for addiction. I'm particularly interested in the role of dopamine in addiction. So I think that dopamine has suffered from a lot of misunderstanding in its history as a neurotransmitter. Even today people talk about things like dopamine and pleasure. But actually if you look in animal models, when you uh, give some sort of electric shock or a stimulus that isn't pleasurable, you also also see increases in dopamine, the same as when you have a pleasurable stimulus. And studies like this have helped us to realize that dopamine probably isn't involved in things like dopamine and reward, but is actually probably much more involved in things like motivated behavior. We can think about this when people take drugs as the difference between liking the drug and wanting the drug. We know that both of these can drive addictive behaviors, but the liking of the drug is probably less about dopamine and more about opioids. And as people continue to take the drug and they stop liking it as much, um, they still feel that compulsion to take it. And that's really more or dopamine's role. So it seems in drug addiction, while opioids probably play a role early on, it's really dopamine later on that drives that continual wanting the drug, searching for the drug. It almost becomes a habit for people. And in fact, when you look at parts of the brain that are important for habit formation, we know that dopamine is a major neurotransmitter in those areas. I think this is really important for treatment because it tells us about maybe targeting dopamine in addicts who've been addicted for a long time, but that it may not be so beneficial for people early on in the addiction process. And so I think that this is really important for helping to us to identify new targets and knowing that dopamine does play a critical role also allows us to look at things that dopamine interacts with. So it increases the number of drug targets that we can look at. One thing that my lab is really interested in is the interaction between dopamine and inflammation and, and that opens not just dopamine as a target but inflammatory markers as well. So one thing that makes dopamine difficult to target is that um, you need to have drugs that can actually penetrate the blood-brain barrier. Um, and so this is something that can be a bit difficult. Um, but we do have drugs, for example, for schizophrenia. We know that many antipsychotics work by antagonizing dopamine receptors or blocking dopamine receptors. So um, there already is a history of being able to target dopamine, I think we just need to get better at refining it. So for example, one common side effect of drugs that target dopamine is that it can lead to Parkinsonian side effects. And as a Parkinson's researcher, that's definitely not something you want. Um, so I think we need to get better at understanding dopamine receptor subtypes and which play a role in the disease. And I think this is where a lot of the investigations that are going on right now become really important.